10 pointers that determine a favorite orchid, I got a request in from Paige, so I'm going to honor that today, by actually defining my top five orchids, going by the list of what I put out on that video. And it was actually funny when I was actually recording that video, I thought, well, I guess I'm now gonna have to define which are my top five based on the top 10 attributes for a favorite orchid. And I thought, nah, leave it. Don't wanna be repeating things, but just changing the name around, you know? So Paige, I'm actually really glad that you asked for this video. And um, yeah, let's get to it. Let me show you and uh, anybody else who's watching. Thank you for being here. Welcome. Let me show you my top five orchids based on the list of top 10 attributes. I'm gonna throw in a bonus here because I can tell you that somebody here would not be well pleased if he wasn't included. So top six maybe, but uh, needless to say, the sixth favorite orchid in this list of top five is my favorite sidekick, Maxillaria variabilis, here lovingly known as Cousin It, already staring at candidate number five because you know, if you've been on my channel, you know he makes occasional appearances when there is something of interest to show, but doesn't want to be left out. So Cousin It, Maxillaria variabilis, as a favorite sidekick, comes in at number six. Number five, Angracum ossery. And the criteria I've gone by is how many attributes of my top 10 attributes does an orchid qualify for? So number five is Angracum Bossery because of the name, the memories, and the leaves. Never bloomed for me, doesn't matter. Of course, I would like some blooms one day, but these three attributes make it a favorite. So Bossery has my family name in it, and it brings a lot of memories because it's an angracoid, something that I was always in awe of out there in Kenya, where I used to live. And then the leaves. And when I say leaves, you might wonder why the leaves, because clearly they're not clean and I should be cleaning them. Well, I'm a little bit hesitant to clean this one because of the glaucous effect that some of the leaves still retain and if I can just leave them alone, this is not dirt. This is beautiful, sort of a blue hue to the leaves as they grow. And rain, wind, and other things, maybe an insect landing on it, kind of thing, the elements do start to remove the glaucous effect. But I am hesitant to just wipe them down because I love that a lot. So three out of 10 for my bossery. And uh, the number one factor that made this qualify above others that find themselves with three attributes out of 10, it's the family name in the name of this orchid. So number five is Angracum bossery. Number four, Brassavola digbiana. And if anybody has seen my orchid tag video, there's also one question that says, what are your top five orchids? And at the time I wasn't going by these attributes when I listed them. But if I remember correctly, I'm actually listing three out of the five that are on that video. Brassavola digbiana being one of them. The attributes that add up to making this orchid number four, the blooms, the fragrance, the environment, growth habit, leaves, and the time of the blooms. Again, you see the glaucous effect on the leaves. I love that. So that attribute qualifies. And the blooms are just impressive, gorgeous, impressive. Not very long lasting, but definitely, definitely something I need in my collection. The fragrance is amazing out of this world. 
very, very sweet and citrusy and floral all in one, very potent. And then in the evening, it pans out through the living room because the next attribute is time of blooms. It actually blooms early spring. And that is something that, well, I look forward to coming out of winter to get this fresh spring fragrance and flower coming through at a time of year when the winter has been not so kind, not so nice, not my favorite time of year. The growth habit is definitely something that is listed here as well because it just grows upright, bolt upright, like soldiers standing straight in line. I try to make sure that it stays that way by keeping the new growths away from the light so that they continue with their upright growing habit. I don't think it would make much difference if I didn't do that, but I'm not gonna risk it for one year because so far I've got this gorgeous upright growing habit and it has to, it does qualify for that point. Then the other thing is environment. I have the environment for it. I can grow it. It's not a headache for me. It doesn't cost me a lot of effort to take care of this one. I have plenty of light. The winter temperatures that I can provide the minimums are okay for it because it has bloomed for me. So I'm safe to say that my environment makes this an easy grower and that's why it qualifies. So that is Brassavola Digbiana. Number four, let's go on to number three. Bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> no, not necessarily, but coincidentally, we're going up another size. Number three is my golf green hair pig. And that has attributes that brings it into number three of the name, the memories, the fragrance, the environment, the growth habit, and the blooms. So one, two, three, four, five, six attributes. That's already ranking quite high, six out of 10. That makes this orchid my third favorite. And I'm quite surprised. I thought it would rank a bit higher, but you know, I was just being honest with myself and I thought, okay, no, if you're number three, you're number three. But uh, Brassicathlia Gold Green is also featured as a favorite orchid of mine in the orchid tag. So that's, I like that. I like the consistency. So this year's growth, we have a sheath and it has a bulge in it, which surprises me because normally golf green flowers for me right after Brassavola digbiana. So I get like two of the floofy, greeny, chartreuse colored blooms back to back. But this sheath is already bulging. I'm quite surprised, not complaining. They're only down there, but hey, and beautiful blooms. And golf green hair pig is uh, simply because of my son, a golf professional, and we ventured on the golf courses together a lot, and golf green. We read a lot of putts together. Definitely a favorite. I love the leaves. I love the upright growth. The environment is easy. It has bloomed for me, so that means I can grow it. It's not a headache. And the memories, of course, the memories. So coming in at number three is golf green hair pig. Coming in at number two, Epidendrum Parkinsonianum. Attributes that qualify and make this orchid number two is names, memories, environment, growth habit, leaves, blooms, fragrance. So that brings it to number two, seven out of 10 attributes it qualifies for. These attributes qualify, basically when I saw the name, Parkinsonianum, my father suffered from Parkinson's disease. I have a lot of memories, clearly, from my dad, some that you might have heard in previous videos. The environment for me is easy, it has bloomed for me. Given the fact it was a first time bloomer for me this year, it qualifies for the environment and how I can take care of it for it to bloom. Love the growth habit. Oh, who doesn't like the noodle things hanging down? Awesome, absolutely awesome. It's got uh, three new growths that I can 
clearly see are going to be potential. So that's one here, two here, the third one down here. This is an extension of like a seedling growth, but I think it's just bulking up. I don't think it has any potential for blooming. Growth habit, pendant, leaves, Tourette. Absolutely perfect, perfect. I love this orchid so much. The blooms are spectacular. They are long lasting, super long lasting, months even, starting early spring and just going on and on and on and even tolerating some hot temperatures and still not fading. The fragrance is knockout at night, just gorgeous. And then they are so enormous as well. I mean, this seven out of 10, that's why when I was going through everything and making my little list, I'm like, wow, of all orchids, I knew she was very special. She did not feature in my orchid tag video. And of all the orchids, I was like, seven out of 10. That's pretty awesome, that's out there. So she is number two in my favorite list of orchids. So much so that the dist that Parkinsonianum actually qualified for astound me. I was worried it's gonna knock off what I consider my absolute favorite orchid, just because maybe the Parkinsonium had more attributes to qualify and knock it up to first place. And my favorite one that I think is my favorite one, this is Cattleya Maxima. And it is my favorite one. But if I go strictly by the list, then I have to also be honest if Parkinsonium had beat it. However, here we have, for example, Maxima's list of why it qualifies. It also has seven attributes. So if I may allow the, let's say, the executive decision as to if there is a tie, I get to say which one goes number one, then I'm gonna just say seven out of 10. There's two of them and well, I'm going to choose the Maxima to be my favorite, favorite orchid. But the attributes that qualify here are names, memories, fragrance, vigor, environment, growth habit, and bloom. So I love the vigor of this orchid. It might not be as rapid a grower as Mr. Cousin It over here, because he's like going vigor. Seriously, look at me. How many grows have I done? I'm vigorous, that is not vigorous. Oh, but it is. It gives me new growth twice in one season. So this is the first growth that has matured this year. And it has that dried out sheath, which inside is chubby. I hope, I hope I'm not just feeling the wrinkles of the sheath. And then it sent out two more leads two more leads last year only one additional lead so i'm really glad and these sheaths are also chubby despite still being green hang on a second yeah, i think this one feels chubby i can't be 100 percent sure so vigor is point number seven and i'm not just making that up but that that was it was a close call between maxima and parkinsonianum so the name fit because Maxima, because of my son, whose name was Maximilian. The memories, of course, my goodness, loaded with memories. The fragrance of this orchid is absolutely out of this world. I'm trying to think of an orchid that I have that matches, and I could say the Roebling could match the fragrance, but I guess I'm so biased about Maxima that, oh my goodness, that fragrance. It's, it's gorgeous, gorgeous. I mean, I would say roses, but more on even more feminine than that. There's no dustiness in the layer of her fragrance. Just gorgeous fragrance. The environment, well, she bloomed for me. So environment, that makes it a clear favorite because I can take care of it enough for it to bloom. And then, well, the growth habit, it's bolt upright. Yes, I trained my Maxima, with light so that the growths, these are the new ones, I'm not supporting them. The only reason this orchid is currently supported is if you've seen my Maxima repot, it was a recent cleanup, a repot was necessary despite being in sheath. And then you can now see, if you saw that video, I didn't like the pot. And then I took a walk with my gimbal and I got her a beautiful, beautiful square pot. 
that sits flush and none of this, oh, it'll do nonsense. It's not acceptable for my favorite, favorite orchid of all of my collection. So seven out of 10 attributes is a match to my Parkinsonianum, but to be able to break the tie, this one wins as number one. All right, so I hope that this gave a little bit more insight into how I categorize my orchids. Maxima also featured in my orchid tag, so that is Gulf Green Hair Pig, Brassavola digbiana, and Maxima, and I picked those out when I was just starting my channel. So three out of five, not too bad, and they are now also back qualifying in my top five, so there you go. If you want to go back, I'll leave a link of the orchid tag in the description below. Thank you, Paige. This was a nice video to film. I really appreciate it. It also gave me an opportunity to look back at my list. And well, thank you very much for your request. I appreciate that you are supporting my channel so much. I hope I did your request justice and that you agree with me. And if you have other ideas, what about this orchid and that orchid, leave it in the comments below and I shall just type out quickly the attributes and we'll see how far off I am. Maybe we can do a six. Oh no, not six. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Whew, don't want to offend cousin it. We can do a seven to 10 or something like that. Anyway, I babble. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Stay safe. Take care. Bye.